so the, this video and the next one will be recorded uh, under the calculus of variation uh, but has nothing to do but have nothing to do with the calculus of variation the calculus of variation deals with the extremization problem of a functional a functional is a function of functions or it may be the definite integral of a functional but here in this class we shall consider the extremization of problem of a function of one or more variables without any restriction in the next class we shall consider the optimization of a function subjected to restriction and we shall introduce the lagrange's method of undetermined multiplier so extremization means means stationary values finding the stationary values values which includes maxima minima and point of in inflection that is it is the maxima or a minima or point of inflection This is used for one variable and it is a saddle point for more than one variable. So for, um, what we do in ordinary calculus, consider a function y of x, function of single variable, function of one variable. In which case we consider y as a function function of x and for stationary values we are to find out the values of x say x0 so we first can add at stationary points which is x0 there, there may be more than one values of x0 at stationary points we have d of dx d of dx at 0 is equal to 0 and furthermore uh, if you want to know what is the uh, what is the nature of the special point then we, we calculate d2 of dx2 at 0 and if we have uh, this is greater than 0 we call it is a point of minimum x0 is a point of minimum if it is less than 0 x0 is a point of maximum and if it is 0 then it is a point of inflection Let me first try to justify this condition. We know that d of function, this is written as, if we have a function f, uh, we expand it about x0, so the function is f at x0 plus x minus x0 a prime at x0 plus x minus x0 squared by factorial a double prime at x0 plus higher order terms we neglect the higher order terms and at the stationary point if x0 happens to be a stationary point so this is 0 so this becomes f of x0 plus h square by 2 f double prime at x0 right we introduce h is equal to x minus x0 now <coughs> if we calculate d of which is f of x minus f of x0 this is equal to h square by 2 it is a positive quantity times 
if dollar prime at x0. Now, if x0 is the point of maximum, then at the neighborhood of x0, in the neighborhood of x0, the functional value is less than the value at x0. So, if x0 is a point of maximum, this quantity is negative, which indicates the first second element has to be negative for the point of maximum. This is the condition. And if x0 is a point of minimum, then um, for all points in the neighborhood of x0, the functional value is greater than that at x0 and the df has to be positive near, near the I mean, local minima and this indicates that the second derivative has to be positive. On the other hand, if the graph uh, the passes through zero curvature line, so in this case, the if you consider point x0, then the value of the function is not changing in its neighborhood and given the point of inflection for the double derivative is zero. We consider a simple example f of x is equal to we consider f of x is equal to x cubed by y minus x to the power of 4, 3x to the power of 4 by 4 plus 2x cubed by 3. So that a prime of x, a prime of x is equal to x to the power of 4 minus 3x cubed 2x square. X, taking x square common, this is x minus 1, x minus 2. So the stationary points are points are x is equal to 0, 1 and 2. Our aim is to uh, see what the what is the nature of the um, stationary points, what are the nature of the stationary points. So for this end we shall calculate the double derivative. This is 4x cubed minus 9x square plus 4x. So if double prime at 0 is 0, which is the point of inflection. x0 is a point of an inflection. F double prime at 1 is 4 is minus 1 less than 0 so it is a maximum it is a point of maximum and if double prime at 2 is equal to this is plus 4 rather than 0 so it is the minimum point. So this is all. This is the thing that we know very well from before. Now I consider a function of two variables. A function of two variables. A function of f of x y. <coughs> We consider function f of x y. Our aim is again to find out the stationary values and the nature of the stationary values. So we write b of is equal to we we write b of as is equal to del f del x dx plus del f del y dy with the first derivative then we come to 
of Plus higher order terms. This is the uh, Taylor expansion applied to or applied to a function of two variables. For stationary points, we must have the first derivative zero. For stationary points, These are characterized by x is equal to x0, y is equal to y0 for the sake of gravity, we write it as O. Uh, then we have del f, del x at O is equal to 0, is equal to del f, del y at O. So there are two simultaneous equations and two unknowns can be determined from these two equations. Now coming to the point of stability analysis. Uh, stability and for stability analysis, uh, we know, we denote a certain notation or we write this expression as f of x dx plus f of y dy plus half f x x dx square plus half f y y dy square plus f of x y dx dy and other higher order terms are neglected. Uh, now we know that the condition the, the nature of the stationary points are determined from the fact that if at x equal to if at 0, that means 0 point means x0, zero, y0. Zero. If x, x and f of y, y are greater than 0 and d is equal to f x x f of y y minus f of x y square is greater than 0 it is a point of minimum it corresponds to minimum point if are less than 0 and d is still greater than 0 it is a maximum point if if x y and if sorry if x x and x y are of opposite sign if, um, that is if x x and x y are of opposite sign x, 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 y, y is greater than 0 or b is less than 0 then it is a subtle point subtle point x0 is a subtle point x0, y0 is a subtle point and finally if d is equal to 0 in conclusion, no conclusion no conclusion can be drawn In fact, if we expand the function at x, y in Taylor series around the stationary point, then we have um, the we have we expand the function in two-dimensional Taylor series. That is, f of x, y is equal to f of x zero y zero plus 
fx and and 0 dx plus fy and 0 dy plus half fxx and 0 dx square fy y 0 and dy square plus 2 f xy and 0 dx dy and we neglect the higher term so we put it equal to sign and for special points these two are 0 so we have df equal to f of xy minus f of x0 y0 this is equal to half times this is called h so this is a h square plus two c h k and then v k square where we introduce this notation d x is equal to h we introduced earlier d y is equal to k which is introduced to our if xx and 0 is a, if yy and 0 is b, and if xy and 0 is c. We write it as, we first take a common, so in the denominator this is 2a, so that quantity is a square h square plus 2 a h there will be one a so it makes a h and then c k this is a h c k plus c square k square now c square k square term is add <coughs> add it so this c square plus my c square k square has to be removed and this term is plus b by a k square which can be written as 1 upon 2 a a k a h c k a h c k whole square minus a square taken common oh sorry this is the a this is a b a into sorry this is not c square This quantity is essentially positive. And this quantity is essentially positive from the, the nature of this quantity will be determined by this one. If the stationary point is a point of max, is a minimum point, is a point of local minima, then this is positive. For this to be positive, we must have this quantity this is if a is positive then this quantity has to be negative and if we have mm, a negative then this quantity has to be adjusted accordingly which leads to these kind of conditions here we shall take a mm, simple example of a function of two variables uh, function of two variables and we will analyze its nature of singularity. Let me come to the condition once more. 1 upon 2 a, I think this is a h plus c k whole square plus k square 
AB minus C square. C is the XY square. If A, A means F X X is positive, then the point will be a point of minimum, that is, it will be right hand side will be positive when AB is greater than C square. So this is AB is greater than FXX and FXY are positive and this is the condition. We could, this second condition comes if we could, if we take B common in the denominator. On the other hand, if A means if xx is negative, then this quantity will be a minimum when we have the reverse. <coughs> and if we have this is positive, this quantity is positive and A is negative, A is negative, then it would correspond to a point of maximum, in which case this is greater than this and the total quantity is negative. Now we consider the ex a particular example. The function is x cubed minus 12x plus y cubed plus 3y square minus 9y. So this is the function. f of x, so to get stationary point, we write f of x is equal to 3x square minus 12, which when set equal to 0 gives you x is equal to plus minus 2 as the x coordinate of the stationary points. Similarly, uh, f of y is equal to 3x square plus 6y minus 9. When we set it equal to 0, we get y0 is equal to 1 and minus 3. Because this becomes y square plus 2y minus 3. So, both. so which can be written as y plus 3, y minus 1. So the, these are the two values. So the stationary points are Two one two minus three minus two one and minus two minus three. These are the four stationary points. Now let me calculate f f x x six x f y y is equal to f y y is equal to 6 y plus 1 and f of x y is equal to 0 so d becomes simply f x x f of x y so the points are Conclusion. First, we take the first point that is a uh, two one point. At two one point, this is plus twelve. This is plus twelve. D is greater than zero, and two minus three point. This is plus 12, this is minus 12, D is negative. 
then we have minus 2 1 point this is minus 12 plus 12 D is negative and finally at the fourth point minus 2 minus 3 this is minus 12 minus 12 D is product than G so these are the four points that we here we see that D is positive and A FXX or A rather these two are so this is the point of minimum. Similarly, this is the point of maximum. And these two are subtle points. This is the singularity analysis for a function of two variables. Now we shall switch over to a function of more than uh, two variables and we uh, just outline the methods. Consider a function f which is a function of say n variables. Our problem is to find out the stationary values in which case um, the all the variables are independent of each other. That is the function is not subjected to any condition. So this is an unrestricted uh, extremization, invariable function. So the form variables are x1, x2, right up to xn. These are conveniently written as vector x, where x is a vector in n dimensional space. So we write f at a point is equal to we expand it in terms of some stationary points if there is any. So we call it x0 vector, which is x10, x20 x and 0. So our aim is to find out these station points and then we, we shall um, analyze the stationary nature of stationary points. First thing we expand it in Taylor series about x0. So this is del, F, del xi at the point at x0 x is equal to x0 times dxi, i is equal to 1 to n, for stationary points they all are 0 plus half summation over i j del 2f del xi del xj Evaluated at x is equal to x0 dxi dxj plus higher order terms, which we neglect. So for stationary points, this is 0. Uh, if x0 is a stationary point, then it is 0, and this becomes uh, d of f that is the change in the function at a point around the stationary point is f at x minus f of x0 this is equal to half summation over ij del 2 f del xi del xj evaluated at x is equal to x0 times dxi dxj and this is an approximate relation because we have neglected the higher order terms. If we define this as the uh, matrix element, we define mij is equal to del 2f del xi del xj at x is equal to x0 as the matrix then it is a real symmetric matrix so it is a real symmetric matrix 
square matrix, real symmetric square matrix. It will, it has in real eigenvalues and orthonormal eigenfunctions. It can be shown that this quantity, I am just giving the mathematics, this quantity is proportional to, it will, there will be a problem a i square lambda i, by lambda i are the eigenvalues of any matrix and these are some constants expansion coefficients, expansion coefficients actually we write vector d dx vector in terms of the i a i times EI, if we use Dx notation, this is the representation of this, and these AI are the expansion coefficients, like I extends from um, 1 to N. Now, in, this, is the, this constant is a positive constant, and um, it is the half. Uh, now, <coughs> if the point DF has to be a point of minimum. Point of minimum in that case, mm, this has to be positive. Since a i square are positive, then if lambda i, all the lambda i's are positive, then it will be a point of minimum. And if all the lambda i's are negative, then df will be negative and, will, and it will be a point of maximum. So the confusion is A. If all lambda i's are greater than 0, then x0 is a minimum point. If there are more than one x0 which satisfies this, there may be more than one minimum. If all x i's are less than zero, x zero corresponds to a point of maximum one. And if the if some of the lambda i's are zero or have the mixed sign there is no conclusion which can be drawn out of the theory. No conclusion, conclusion can be drawn out of this. If both the above conditions, if any one of the above conditions, if any one of the above conditions fails, above conditions fails, that is either if some of the lambdas are zero or lambdas are of mixed times. In the next class we shall consider constraint variation. That is, in this lecture we have considered variation of a function of a single, two and multivariable fun function which are not subjected to any constraints. They are in problems of physics and mathematics the constraint variation is Mm, constant variation occurs very frequently. So in the next class we shall consider the variation of a function subjected to some constraints.